right. Good evening, brothers and sisters. God bless. Uh, thank you for the invitation uh, to share the scriptures with you tonight. Um, <clears throat> all right, we will get straight into we'll get straight into it. Um, my my talk is is based off uh, things that I I go through, um, personal struggles and. Uh, our trials and tribulations that we face day by day. Um, and these scriptures are um, the scriptures that we read, that I read uh, for encouragement. Um, and so I've, I've recently um, gone through these scriptures um, for myself, for my own personal encouragement. Um, and, uh, I'm, you know, I thank the Lord that his word is alive and his, his word is real. Um, and that we can uh, read his word to uh, get guidance and uh, also to hear his voice. Um, well, I was just zooming in uh, to the Darwin Fellowship and uh, heard a talk from a brother there that uh, was on very similar lines as what I'm speaking about tonight. And it was very encouraging for me to hear uh, the Lord bringing up um, this topic and, and, and these scriptures uh, you know, twice in one night, which, you know, Brother George gave a testimony in Darwin and he, and he said about uh, hearing things more than twice. Uh, it's, it's an amazing thing to uh, hear the Lord's voice and for him to uh, reestablish or and to establish his word. Um, and he always backs it up, you know, that he uh, always comforts us, like Sister Rose was talking about in her testimony just now. Um, the, the Lord is always there. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. But, you know, there's, you know, we're going to go through a lot of trials and tribulations in our life. Uh, we're going to go through circumstances. Uh, there's going to be questions on why we're going through what we're going through. Uh, why is it so hard? Um, I look at, you know, different brothers and sisters and see their circumstances and how they're going with their, um, uh, with their life and, you know, illnesses and, and whatnot. And, uh, um, you can just see uh, everything is is just pointing to the Lord's return, and 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 I know that we go through things for a reason, and uh, the reason is uh, what we'll do. We'll turn to Malachi chapter three uh, to start off with. Malachi chapter three, verse two and three. So we know that the Lord's uh, the Lord's return is coming soon. Um, and we need to uh, get prepared. And the Lord is also going to prepare us uh, every day of our lives. So in verse 2, it says, But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. So the Lord is a refiner. We go through circumstances and trials, tribulations, problems in our life, um, and uh, the Lord is testing us. When we go through these uh, trials, do we turn to him or do we turn to man or do we turn to uh, this world's wisdom uh, or do we rely on the Lord? And so the Lord is always, uh, always there watching over us and, and he never will leave us nor forsake us. And, and he is watching. And I don't know if anyone's seen um, uh, a purifier or a purifier of silver when he refines it. Um, he has to sit there and he watches the silver um, melt and, and, he, and he watches all the blemishes and the impurities burn away. And if uh, and he's constantly got to watch it because if he burns it too much, he destroys it. And if he doesn't burn it enough, there's still impurities and imperfections in the silver. So he has to do it perfectly, just right. So you have to watch constantly. And so that's exactly what the Lord does. He's constantly watching over us um, and, and watching us uh, go through our trials and tribulations, wanting us to rely on him and to turn to him. Um, but sometimes our mind can get clouded. Uh, our mind, you know, when we, when we, um, uh, we lose focus on the Lord and, and we, we walk away or we, we get troubled uh, by the things that we're going through and we, we get disheartened and we lose our faith. And, you know, many things can come against us for, to separate us um, from that closeness with the Lord. Um, but what the Lord wants us to constantly understand is that he is always watching. He is always there. He will never leave us nor forsake us. 
And uh, because he is, he is uh, watching us, um, um, we'll go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. And as, a, as the Lord is purifying us as, as gold and as silver, um, that, that we may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness, the reason why he does it, it's uh, in verse uh, 7, we'll pick it up, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So, you know, this scripture goes very well with Malachi. You know, the Lord is allowing us uh, to go through things uh, to purify us because there's no corruptible thing that will enter into the kingdom of God. And so um, he's, he's, he's making sure that we are, are getting all our impurities burnt away, but he doesn't allow us to go through more than what we can handle, it says in the scriptures. It, he, he never, he'll never allow us to go through more than we can handle because as Malachi said, he is a refiner and he watches perfectly. He doesn't give us too much so that we perish and he doesn't give us not enough so that we've still got impurities and imperfections. He watches over us and, and watches constantly and he's purifying us so that we be perfect and that we can stand in his presence. And in verse 8, it says, Whom having not seen, ye love in whom though now you see him, um, uh, you see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Um, and so we know that we don't see the Lord. We, we, we can't see him there, but we know he's there. We, we, uh, we, we know that he's got a love for us and that we've got a love for him. Um, but sometimes we can uh, get distracted and, and, and lose that uh, that hope in the Lord. We can lose that uh, faith in the Lord. Uh, um, I, I was listening to a talk by Brother Aaron, who's yeah, in the Darwin Fellowship. And he gave his uh, talk tonight. And what he was, he was talking about, and it was a really, really good explanation, it's like a wedge. Um, and when the wedge gets in between, you know, the problem or the situation or uh, the, the doubt or whatever it is, it gets between you and the Lord, uh, the bigger it gets, the the wider the wedge gets open, the, the, the further away you get separated from the Lord. And so we've got to make sure that we, we don't allow anything to become a wedge. Um, and um, we know that the Lord is there. We know the Lord is watching. Um, and even though we don't see him, we believe that he's there because of his scriptures, because we know his word is alive. We know that everything we read in the Gospels, um, are written. everything that's in the Bible is written for us for encouragement uh, for guidance, um, but we just need to believe it. And like Sister Mira, it, it's amazing how uh, Brother Aaron's talk, uh, Brother George's testimony, um, Sister Mira's testimony, and this talk now go go really well together. Um, uh, Sister Mira was saying, you know, not to, to lose focus and stuff. So, you know, we, um, we, we can't afford to lose focus on the things of the Lord. Um, and, and we've got to constantly... Uh, keep praying to him and and she was saying that also um, she knew that the best thing for her was to come to the meetings not even allowing uh, anything to stop her from coming to meetings because she knows that Jesus Christ is the answer and brothers and sisters he is the only answer for everything that we go through in our lives um, every trial every tribulation every problem every circumstance um, anything that we have in our lives work uh, uni school uh, family, uh, health, financial, whatever it is, the Lord is the answer. Um, let's turn to Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. It says, uh, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So we want to, you know, just understand that the position that we've been placed in, and that is all because of what Jesus Christ did and what he accomplished. It was by his grace that we now stand in the presence of God. And when we go through our problems and our trials, our tribulations, we can pray to the, to the heavenly father, to the creator of all things for comfort, for peace, 
for guidance, um, for deliverance, you know, and, and that's all because of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. Um, verse 3, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. You know, the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. Um, you know, we are, we are such a, a blessed, privileged people that we can pray and worship the Heavenly Father, the creator of all things, directly. You know, we, we've got one-on-one -on -one communication, you know, with, a, with an incredible language, a pure, wonderful language that we can, we can glorify the Father. We, we, we glorify Jesus every time we open our mouths and, and praise him, you know. So uh, he, he's given us this opportunity to, to call out to him. Um, so when we go through our, our problems and our trials and our tribulations, it, it's, it's, it's not a good idea to try and work it out on ourselves, but instead pray in this beautiful language that the Lord has given us to draw closer unto him to get our answers and to get deliverance. No, that's what the Lord wants from us. That's why he's given us uh, his Holy Spirit. That's why he's given us a language to talk to him, to pray to him, to worship him, to glorify him. Uh, and by doing so, he blesses, you know, he heals, he delivers, you know, that's all he wants. He, he wanted a relationship uh, with mankind from the very beginning. And, and, and that had to take Jesus Christ's life. You know, it was because of Jesus Christ sacrificing himself um, and by that grace, we stand in the presence of God, washed, cleansed, purified, you know, and, 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 and it's a, a continuing thing. We're going to constantly get purified and all that imperfections are going to get uh, burnt away uh, so that we could be in the eternities in the presence of our Holy Father. You know, th this is what we, we, we strive for, the ultimate goal, which is to stand in the presence of God to be right with Jesus Christ. So when the Lord returns, he will, we will all hear the words, well done, my true and faithful servant, because of all the things, you know, that we just read, um, you know, to uh, by whom also we have access by faith, by grace we really stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope. You know, so when we also go through our problems, our trials and our tribulations, um, we, we learn, we learn experience, we learn obedience, you know, just as Jesus Christ suffered in the flesh, you know, and he learned obedience through that suffering. We also learn obedience. We also have experience so that when a, a brother or a sister um, is, is uh, going through a, a similar circumstance or the same circumstance, um, we can encourage because we know what it's like. We, we, we've been delivered from it. The Lord's answered our prayers. We know what the answer was. We know what we did. And now we can go and then we can encourage one another to build each other up, you know, to be an example, uh, to be a testimony, um, and to pray with one another, um, to help each other overcome our, our situ situations and our battles that we face. Um, because, you know, we... we we, we look at people, our brothers and our sisters, and we see how they are uh, with their health uh, and, and, and the problems that they're going through, and it saddens us. You know, we don't want any of our brothers or sisters to suffer in the flesh. You know, we don't want them to go through things. And so it is a wonderful thing to pray for one another um, so that, and, for, and to fast for one another so that we overcome the flesh and overcome this world. But we know that Jesus Christ has already overcome, and through him we will be overcomers. Um, James chapter 1, verse 2 to verse 5. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If you lack uh, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given unto him. So let patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Going through these, these, these trials and tribulations, sometimes 
uh, we don't get the victory straight away. Sometimes we don't get the healing straight away. Uh, but we learn patience. We learn long suffering. We learn um, how to um, uh, look after uh, one another because by by we ourselves going through circumstances, we we learn that experience to then pass on that experience. You know, um, once we learn long suffering, we know what it means to to be long suffering. Once we learn patience, you know, we know what it means to be patient. You know, and so when we're um, the Lord is constantly uh, refining us and teaching us and showing us what it is to be right with him, what he expects of us, to be humble, to be walking with him uh, constantly, to have our heads held high, to know that we are the children of the living God. And that's all the Lord wants us to, to, to understand. Um, everything that he does is for a reason and for a purpose, and it's for our own, own good. It's for our benefit, brothers and sisters, so that we can be a... Uh, uh, perfect and right in front of him that we may be testimonies unto him that we may draw people to him um, because when the the world see us go through you know difficulties and and they they know the difficulties that we're in that we're in but they see the smile on our face and that we're rejoicing they think what well, what's what's going on with this person why you know everyone else when they go through these circumstances they're down they're depressed they're sad they're this they're that um, but when they look at us, they see the Lord reflecting through us because our relationship with the Lord is strong. And that's what it comes down to, brothers and sisters. The only way that we're going to overcome our battles, the only way we're going to overcome the flesh, the only way we're going to overcome sicknesses or anything that comes before us is through the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't have the scripture in front of me now, but in, in uh, John chapter 15, it talks about Jesus being uh, the true vine and that where are the branches and if we do not abide in Jesus, we can do nothing. We cannot accomplish anything unless we abide in him, which means spending time with him, which means praying uh, in the spirit, which means reading the word of God, which means fasting, which means fellowshipping. You know, it, it, all these things is what draws us closer to the Lord. And by doing so, we will overcome all things that come before us. Um, Is don't turn to it. This is just a quick one here in First Peter chapter five. It says, "Humble yourselves, therefore, unto the mighty hand, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, uh, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour." And so, when we go through our trials and tribulations, the devil waits for us to get to a low point in our life, and that's when he attacks because he's always going after the weak ones. Because when you're looking to the Lord and when you're really strong walking with him, he knows he can't come near you. But when, you're, when you distance yourself from the Lord, which means your prayer life has dropped, your reading life has dropped, um, that's when the devil pounces and that's when he tries to attack you and draw you away from the Lord. Um, so that's why it says here to be sober and, and vigilant, always watching, always watching and knowing what is about you, knowing what this world will bring, knowing the temptations that it has, knowing that everything that comes your way uh, could be a, a, a way of the devil separating you from the Lord. So when we're constantly aware of these things, um, we know uh, when the devil is approaching or when a circumstance is coming our way, we can see it for what it truly is because we've got spirit, we're looking through spiritual eyes, not fleshy eyes. Um, so, and the only way that is, if you humble yourselves, brothers and sisters, therefore, un, um, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that ye may exalt, He may exalt you in due times. The safest place to be is in the palm of the of the Lord. Um, in Colossians, Colossians chapter three, I think it is, or chapter yeah, chapter three, it says, "We are hid with Christ in God." We are hid with Christ in God. What, what, a, what a wonderful place to be. That's the problem. It is the most safest place to be. And that's the only place we want to be. Um, I've only got two more scriptures and then we're done. Um, James chapter 1, verse 12. James chapter 1, verse 12 to verse 16. It says here, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. And what an amazing thing that will be. 
brothers and sisters, when we, when we finally meet the Lord in the air and we receive our crown of life, everything that we've gone through would have been worth it because now we're in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ for the eternities, uh, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. And that's all he wants from us, brothers and sisters, just to love him, to worship him, to pray to him, to spend time with him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. So God doesn't bring the problems. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't give you the problems, brothers and sisters, but the Lord uh, allows the problems to happen because he wants to try and refine you. There's two things that happen. God tries to make you. The devil tries to break you. Remember that always. The Lord allows things to happen, but he wants you to rise above it. He wants you to uh, turn to him, to pray to him, to ask for guidance, and, and he will. That's what he wants. And so he's going to allow you to decide and to make your own decisions of what you want to do in your life. God didn't create robots, but he wants us to turn to him. So when we do so, the Lord will make us. He will, he will, he will, we will be conquerors through that. Um, Verse 14, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my, blood, my beloved brethren. Do not err means do not uh, go astray. Do not turn aside uh, from, the, from the Lord. Because, you know, the lust, uh, when it is conceived, bringeth forth sin, and then sin bringeth forth death. So these are warnings for us, brothers and sisters, to make sure that we're always constantly aware that when we're going through problems or trials or tribulations, even when it comes to temptations or the lust of the flesh, that we know that if we sin, sin leads to death. So we want to stay clear from that. We want to remove ourselves even from the situation. We don't even want to entertain the thought, you know, if we know something is wrong, stop. Don't do it. You know, save yourself the, the heartache because the devil will, will use that uh, mistake that you made for the rest of your life. He will keep, constantly keep trying to bring it back to remembrance, to condemn you, to bring you down. So if you don't make the mistake, then he's got no ammunition against you. So don't do it in the first place. So, and the only way that we're going to be able to do this, brothers and sisters, the only way we're going to overcome Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, the last scripture for tonight. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to verse 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of, of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and, all, and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That is the key, brothers and sisters. If you want to overcome your battles, your temptations, uh, your illnesses, your sicknesses, turn to the Lord. He is our only answer. Um, the word of God, the armor, you know, the, the breastplate, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation. We need to be fully equipped because we are fighting a battle. If you put your weapon down, if you put your sword down, brothers and sisters, how are you going to fight back? If you put your shield down, how are you going to be able to resist the fiery darts that get shot at you? If we take our helmet off, how are we going to protect our, our, our mind when we put on the mind of Christ? That is why we've got to put our complete armor on to make sure that we are ready and that we are able to withstand anything that the world brings before us. 
knowing that we have our armor complete and that armor is Jesus Christ. He is our, he is our leader. He is our captain and he is before us. And if he is before us, brothers and sisters, who can be against us? No one. Nothing can be against us and we'll be overcomers and we'll, re we'll receive our crown of life in the eternities. And I'll just leave it there. Amen.